Well, it's Jake Adams here from Reef Builders uh, in Nuremberg, Germany. Got Mark Vanderwall. Cheers, buddy. We're uh, just wrapping up our coverage of Interzoo 2014 and uh, kind of burn out and doing posts. How about you? Yes. Just a little bit, but we're going to talk about uh, some of the really cool, uh, amazing products that we saw. Um, for those that don't know, Interzoo is the uh, largest uh, pet trade show in the world. It happens every two years in Nuremberg, Germany, in a massive convention center with hall after hall after hall events. Huge. Um, so, so Mark, this is your first time in Interzoo. What would you think? It was, well, first word, huge. It was gigantic. I mean, the fact that there were nine, nine halls? I think it was 11. There were 11, oh, because the A's? Yeah. yeah, I forgot about the A's. Yeah, 11 halls full of pet products. I mean, it's like a marathon. I, I wished I had a, a Fitbit on and track, yeah. tracked how many steps I took or, or mileage because it, it would have been probably surprising. But yeah, it was my first and uh, I, I, I don't think anything compares to it. It's, uh, it's really hard to describe the overall general size of the show. It's, it's so large that uh, you spend a lot of your time trying to figure out where things are and how to get from point A to point B. And, uh, and it's a lot, a lot of physical work, um, not even counting how much time we spend uh, processing all the information, talking to people and talking to people. And of course, you know, um, a lot of the socializing after hours, right? Yeah, Cheers yeah. That's, <laughs> there's not really a, a moment of rest where you can just recoup from one day to the next. So every day was like I was progressively more tired, but I just had to push through, drink lots of coffee, and just keep going. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, just exchanging ideas with people from all over the world. Yeah, that that to me was was fantastic. Um, and, and and meeting people, you know, I mean, people that I never thought I would meet, that I maybe interacted with online, but just would never thought I would actually be sitting and having a beer with. Um, so the reason we come to Interzoo is to cover all the products. We obsessively cover the saltwater industry, and this is one of the biggest showings of new products anywhere in the world every two years. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of great, great, great products this year. And, uh, you know, we'll just go straight to the horse's mouth with the LEDs. What do you think about all the LEDs that you saw here at the Interzoo? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you've, you've, been, you've been to more trade shows than I have, but <clears throat> it just was a really good indication of, of where everything's going because everything was LED, absolutely everything. I mean, I, I barely saw any T5. I didn't see a single metal halide. Only. Yeah, metal halides have been squeezed out. There's, uh, people still like their T5s, yeah. but uh, LEDs, uh, man, uh, two years ago there was a lot more metal halides, even a few plasma lights. Eh, I saw a few, but it was definitely. I saw uh, a few fixtures in you know the typical name brand lighting companies. Right. But they weren't even using them. You know they weren't over any tanks. Um, everything, even the fresh water, everything was T5. Reptiles, amphibians using, or sorry, not T5s, LEDs. But even like reptile amphibian displays were all LED. Everything's going LED. Yeah, I felt like, you know, previous years there was a lot of LEDs because people were, you know, they're trying to put up something new, something interesting. But this year felt like the tipping point. Yeah. The tipping point where you saw more LEDs than anything else. So that was uh, really surprising. But uh, since there were so many LEDs, I don't know if they, any of them really stuck out in my mind. There was, yeah. Rio got some got a new light in the game. Uh, Vertex is a new Illumina two. Um, uh, ATI has a solid LED light, the Sirius LED. Pluval has got a next generation of their Marine and Reef, Aqua Sky, and things like that. I mean, I, for me, I saw a big transition to a lot of LEDs without optics, which is numerous LEDs mm -hmm. in the picture. And then there was actually for me a really cool to see a lot of multi chip. LED yeah, fixtures, yeah. like, you know, that, that's, I mean, there was one HP Aquaristic, something yeah. like that, and, I mean, that thing, that thing was so bright, I was so A lot more multi-chips, a lot more variations, yeah. like the Halo from uh, Fluval, yeah. with the circular thing, and Rio had a similar concept, Kessel had a new fixture here at the show, um, but there's so many, it's like, it's like not so many standout lights. It's, yeah, it all just occurred together. Yeah. Um, but LEDs wasn't the only thing that we came here to see. Um, there were some really cool pumps. Yes. You know, people are really pushing the propeller pump side of things. Um, the real standout product of the whole show has got to be the Riptide. 
Yeah, by MaxSpec. So MaxSpec put out this new uh, water pump. It's not a propeller pump. It's more like, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a water wheel? Yeah, like, like a... Like a thin water wide. wheel, and it pushes a lot of water. It looks quiet, it looks small. It pushes flow in a, in a gyre-centric way. And it's a way. very linear, just... Nice, flow, nice not, easy, even laminar yeah, flow. Yeah, yeah. That, that to me was amazing. And, and it's such a low profile, you know? If you mount it horizontally, you can mount it in the corners of your tank, and it, in my opinion, it's less visible than any other pump out there. It's so new, like, we, uh, there's going to be a lot of experimentation in figuring out how that thing works. Yes. Or how to apply it. Well, well, that's the thing. It has so many applications. You could do so many different things with it inside your tank. Shallow reef tanks. Because it's so low pressures, high volume, yeah. low pressures. So shallow reef tanks, deep reef tanks, vertical orientation, horizontal. Yeah, that's me. I mean, just you know, looking at any prop pump where the flow goes like this, but in more circular fashion. More of a cone. Just to have this linear flow where something here and here is getting about the same type of flow. Uh, that to me, yeah, that it that's makes it a big game changer. Makes it easier to kind of predict what the water flow is going to do downstream. Yes, yeah. you know how that system and how that gyre is going to propagate. Yes. Um, the other standout pro flow product was the uh, Tunzi NanoStream 6020. Yeah, I like that one a lot. You know, it, actually, it was you that brought up the fact that you know you could just hide it behind the rock work and have it just kind of come over. It's funny how those two pumps stand out. One of them is a kind of revolutionary in its approach to moving water. And then the 6020 is just a slight tweak that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, so those are two products I'm really looking forward to try out. And what are some of the pumps that you've covered? You cover some really high efficiency. Yeah, Aquabee had a, uh, had a DC powered pump, um, not, not rebranded, you know, DC powered pump. They, they engineered it from the ground up. And um, one of the things that I found impressive about it was that it can be dialed down to five watts. And what was still, the maximum flow rate on it? Because I didn't even see it. Uh, you, I, I want to say 8,000 liters. So what is that? Uh, 2,000 gallons per hour? It's a smaller. They have the bigger like one 25, already. 25, 2,700 gallons per hour? Yeah. And you can dial that to five watts? Five watts, <laughs> and it still pumps out 1,000 gallons per hour. Not five watts. Yes, 4,000 liters That's per a, hour. Uh, five watts? Yeah. That doesn't sound right. We'll have to double check that one. <laughs> but we'll check it out. Yeah. Um, what other pumps? Any other pumps? Uh, what else did I see? I just, everything was DC. I mean, that was the other thing. I mean, there was a big shift towards DC powered pumps, you know, in the skimmer lines from every brand. Um, that controllable DC. Uh, Ellis also yes. had a DC controllable pump. It's a matter of time before they use that same pump in their protein skimmers. Um, yeah, definitely a sea change. Definitely a sea change. Um, we didn't we didn't really talk about protein skimmers too much. Skimmers a skimmer, but uh, I did see a couple of neat designs. Well, one of the things I found interesting was, um, and and this goes actually back to pumps as well, is that Neos had a had a controllable speed skimmer pump, but it was AC, not DC. Oh, what? I didn't even see that. Yeah, I, I just I asked the guy, this is a DC pump, right? He's like, no, this is AC. Are you talking about the one with the LED colors? Mm -hmm. That was a, that was a controllable AC pump. Yeah, I didn't even see that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I saw that skimmer, but it just, <laughs> yeah. see, that's why that's why we send two guys to the show with different eyes because we have to divide and conquer, and uh, we see different things and um, go you know have an eye for different devices and products and ask different questions. So it's definitely nice to have uh, some backup. Well, the best ones are where you ask a question assuming you know the answer and yes. they come back and say, no, this is an AC power pump in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even asking the obvious question, sometimes you get a, a surprising answer. Yeah. But on the, so yeah, on the protein skimmer space, I guess I didn't have my mind blown, but those Nios quantum skimmers, and they put a lot of work into them. They're well polished. Um, They're pretty. And I, I just attention to detail on the these. The foam on it was so fine. Yeah. Like, you know, it's easy to say, oh, this is just another needle wheel skimmer with a diffuser and uh, you know some pretty lines but the foam that was coming out was looked really fine and really really dry so it'd be cool to see that happening in an aquarium yeah. um, but waveline waveline the company that really kind of started the whole controllable dc water pump movement um, several years back um, they you know they definitely got uh, imitate, imitated uh, to a great degree so first they had that controllable dc pump then they had an internal pump with open yeah. volute so now they're doing a different thing. We're doing a side attached open volute oh, yeah. so that they can set up an yeah. external open volute skimmer. Because the in open volute skimmers are all internal right now. But the way it's done, they, they, they had one giant uh, skimmer on, on display, but they're showing how if you put the side attached 
open volume on the protein skimmer, you can uh, reduce the footprint of your external skimmer. Usually we're really concerned about the footprint of our internal skimmers, but they're you know, pushing ahead with, uh, with another that's, innovation. I mean, that's a great point because you look at a lot of external skimmers and they are, they're big because you have these side mounted pumps. Yeah, and all the plumbing, and all, all, the, plumbing, all the piping yeah. and stuff like that. That's true. Um, but otherwise, uh, I guess I didn't really see too much else in the skimmer space. No, I mean, you know, tons of the little nano skimmers. The nano skimmers are nice. That's the only ones. I mean, they're yeah. really trying trying to, to make things from the ground up that are interesting. But that 2.5 watt little skimmer and the other larger comm line, I think it's the 9012. Um, yeah, those those kinds are, are kind of stand out, especially in their in their mold and their sleek look. I think the I think the skimmer that caught my attention the most was Tunzi's uh, old skimmer. Ah, yeah. right, right, the old skimmer. Yeah, I mean, celebrating that they've been building skimmers for half a century. They so had explain this, the, explain what you saw. So they had a prototype of their original skimmer that they designed back in well, the Well, it was 60s. a replica, not a prototype. right? Sorry, prototype. Rec yeah, replica. And uh, it even had one of the original pumps on it, and it, it cracked me up because on the label it said "Made in West Germany," and, but the, the foam on it, the air, the, the size of that the was impressive. Bubbles, wow! I gotta, I have to wonder what tweaks he might have made in the replica process yeah. to make it work perfectly. But yeah, I was like, besides the weird shape and size, I was like, I would use that skimmer, bumming yeah. like crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, if that if it truly worked that well in the '60s, then we probably haven't come a very long way. Yeah, I know. In skimmer you know, one, one thing that's funny that occurred to me is one skimmer we didn't see, almost by design, was the innovative Marine Ghost, because it was just stuck in the back of the, the tanks, and you, they weren't really standing just didn't out. Notice it, it was yeah. just right there, little white boxes, and I, I didn't want to like ask him to pull it out so I could get a hands-on look, because I know I can get that look in America. But, uh, you know, that's kind of a different approach. It's like making the skimmer disappear instead of making it, you know, front and center. Um, but, well, you know what really got my attention, besides a couple of those pumps and skimmers, is some of the devices. There were some really interesting devices this year. Oh, we forgot one pump. g has got, a, got yes. a new one. They got a new propeller pump, the RW, which is, you know, an upgrade from their WP line. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, they they now have like a master slave control that you can do with one of the original controllers for the pump, and then you can control up to eight pumps. So. But so on the more exciting devices side. Man, I can't get that Bluetooth controlled uh, GHL dose or two out of my head. That thing was sweet. I mean, you have a, you know, as I remember it, they had two dosers, one for their Profilux controller, and then they had one for people who don't have a controller. Um, but now they're building one single doser that works with their Profilux controller, but if you don't have their other products, you can control it via Bluetooth on your iPhone or Android device, on your tablet. They have a, um, you know, they've updated their software, their web, uh, their web page where you can control all of this and it was just fascinating because you can sit there on your iPhone and you know if you do your test and your calcium is a little low and you need to make the adjustments you make the adjustments on your phone and then you can even just press on that particular the button for that particular doser and it starts dosing. I also I really like down. the uh, the feature where you, you, you program um, with your volume of your of your dosing containers and you can watch it go down as you're dosing yeah and you know it's a simple thing and other controllers can can tell you what percentage is but you see that level drop on purpose but well i think it's revolutionary because it's really one of the first kind of uh, digital devices that finally doesn't try to rebuild the screen and the controller and the interface that you already have in our pockets we already have in our pockets on our yeah. tablets and our computers you walk up you have your phone boom a couple buttons connected do your thing and off you go yeah, and there was just little little touches like putting an LED into the body with a semi-transparent top so that it, it indicates it glows a color. The whole body glows a color. And, you know, if it's, uh, I believe if it's blue, you know, things are good. And if you open up your stand and it's red, then, you know, hey, I might be low on one of my fluids. I got to go check on that and, you know, add more calcium to one of my containers. Or, I mean, just little things like that that I, I think are well thought out and, and neat. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think that was, uh, you know, I'm excited to see it again at Macna and see how much they've done with it. Yes, that's, uh, that's definitely going to make it into my marine aquarium uh, equipment stables, that's for sure. Yep. Now, um, one of the first things, uh, one of the things that really stood out and grabbed my attention on the first interview four years ago was um, a automatic mechanical filter roll device yeah, that yeah. was uh, made out of titanium and IBS plastic, adapted from ponds, and it was about 4,000 euros. 
It's got to be like, I don't know, five thousand, fifty-five hundred dollars or more. And then the last Sinner Zoo, DD had uh, commissioned that company to make a, a breakdown version that came in a box. So you built it yourself, and that one was a thousand euros. But it was still relying on mechanical principles of, of the water overflowing, filling a wheel, and turning the mat. And so this year, this Sinner Zoo finally, finally found a device that hits a sweet spot. It was a, the feeling roller mat. And for 350 euros, you get this smaller, compact, easy to stick in a sump. Uh, roller mat that's actually a uh, level switch activated. Uh, as, as a roller mat gets uh, this gets clogged up, it fills up, hits a switch, and a motor just turns it. And it makes it so much more simple, smaller, and um, finally, you know, the idea of having automatic mechanical mechanical nutrient export could replace a protein skimmer in certain tanks. Yeah, I mean, it's if you think about yeah from a nutrient export standpoint, this is probably one of the biggest changes. You know? Yeah. I mean, and, and imagine. You're not having a chain of filter socks on a clean reef tank for a year, <laughs> for a year. Um, I think the flow rate was about 500 gallons if I, uh, per hour, if I remember correctly. And uh, you know, you can use multiples for larger tanks. Um, but that, uh, you saw another company that had a, a, a similar tank, but it was a little bit more uh, handcrafted than mass yeah, produced. I think the feeling was more refined and you know, just ready for market. Ready for the market, aim for the masses, fits in a sump, um, really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, for people who are, you know, very religious about changing their filter socks every couple of days, this thing, this thing will be a godsend. And I honestly, just thinking about just actively exporting those nutrients before they break down, you know, the leftover food, everything, it's, I think it's going to be a real game changer. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the really cool products of, of Interzoo that you can't experience is the Triton Reef yeah. uh, testing service. Uh, they sell as testing service and instead of just signing up and sending them your water, you can actually walk into a store, buy one of these sleeves for 35 euros here. Don't know what that would break down to in America once it was shipped over. You get a sleeve, you get a security card, you get uh, a vial, you send 15 mLs of water, you sign up with your ID, and uh, a couple weeks later you go online and see what you, the exotic uh, element levels are, like barium, uh, boron, iodine, vanadium, all these, these funky tweaked uh, elements that we don't have good tests for. You mm. know, the whole thing about manganese and flower pot corals, um, there's a lot to be, to be seen and learned from that. What did you glean from Misan in your time spent in the Triton Reef booth? Well, I think it's really going to open up and change how we, how we think about our water quality. You know, we have so much going into our lighting and, and, and spectrum and everything else and I mean, chemistry, I think, is like the next frontier. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and then just, you know, once you start accumulating all this data and being able to look at it and see regional differences, you know, and see, well, maybe these people are more successful with this coral or, you know, it just to, to break it down on the elemental level. Yeah, and to, so um, I think everything's set for Isan to be a, a magna speaker and to have a booth at MACNA and to set up an ICP machine at the show and test people's water like they've never had it tested before in minutes. Just you walk up with your sample. I think there's gonna be a long line, a little <laughs> wait list. You'll have to maybe hand out some of those little vibrator thingies when you go to the restaurant to let you know that your, your test water is test done. is done. Ding! <laughs> maybe an automatic uh, SMS service to let you know what's going on. Um, so that's cool and that's going to be some uh, big changes but some one of the things that you can't see and like you picture and, and, and demonstrate the same as you can some of these other high profile products right i mean uh, I, what do you take a picture of you know yeah exactly man um there's some beautiful tanks beautiful aquariums here it's easy to you know talk about all the equipment and stuff but the glass boxes themselves were really catching my eye ellos I don't know what they, how they do it. It's just the, 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 the stands, the display, the clean lines. They just, they make these simple rectangles that you really, really desperately want. Well, you know, you think glass is glass, and then you walk into the, you know, you walk into their booth and look at their tanks, and it's just, you just, it's like made out of diamonds it's or something. It's an emotional, you know? <laughs> it's an emotional reaction. It's yeah. an emotional response. Um, you know, Ellis has got those nice clean lines. Red Sea. Finally jumping into the uh, LED game and uh, the completely polished aquarium. Again, another strong indication of the LED yeah. thing, you know, I mean. Yeah, Red Sea was a holdout. They were a holdout. They didn't have an LED product or and all their all-in-ones were T5 lit. But 
I guess it says something as far as the like the tipping point I was talking about. If Red Sea's uh, Red Sea Max E series and the S series are going to get upgraded to, to LEDs. Well, in the E series was really cool with the uh, rimless front, and then you have an all-in-one filtration setup, but it's completely ready to go if you want to put a sump in. Yeah. So you know you can start off with the all-in-one, and then if you want to expand and and you know put a calcium reactor in and those kind of things. It's ready to go. You can still use that tank and just plumb it. That would, yeah, they really, they really, uh, I don't know, kind of surprised me as far as like uh, the level of thought and care they put into that with the protein skimmer in the back. Yeah. You know, and so if you get the sump, you take the protein skimmer out of the back and you put it in the sump, and all of a sudden you just, uh, just kind of turbocharge you know, your, your reef tank. And if you just want to have more fish or more corals, just want to get a little bit more to tinker with. The yeah. E series was, was a fun one. Did you see any other all in ones that caught your attention? There was a million of them, but. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I you know I don't know if they're new or not, but I really enjoyed seeing. Uh, I think it was Reef Eden. They had like the all-in-ones that were geared towards both jellyfish, but also one for for seahorses. Yeah. You know, and I just thought that was nice that you're starting to see specialized tanks for for specific. Oh, care. Reef Eden. Yeah. For some, I was thinking uh, Eden Reef. Oh. Uh, yeah. You know, the the, the pot manufacturer. But yes, there are a lot more all-in-ones. Uh, Fluval has got a next generation of their edge tanks, and uh, the. Fluval Edge Reef, and the one for Planet Tanks, and the one for the Planet Tanks had a, a green top mm -hmm. and a cabinet with a beautiful like green inside internal accent that just pulled at my heartstring, and I was just like super excited about it. I expected to turn the corner and see a, a, a reef version with the same ideas and blue trim, and it was kind of somber black, and, and I was super let down. But I, I let them know, and I, hopefully at Mac they'll they'll bring out a, a blue accented reef edition. Um, but you mentioned a good point. There were jellyfish everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know, it's one of those things. It's like, oh, I'm not really in a jellyfish. Oh, I'm not really in a jellyfish. You know, okay, there's a little jellyfish tank, but there were so many of them. It's like, all right, maybe I should pay attention to the jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was another big movement, you know, just seeing yeah, so many jellyfish displays. And seeing tanks, you know, obviously we've seen some of the, uh, uh, what do you call it with the flow, circular flow? The chrysal. Chrysal, yeah. yeah. Saw plenty of those, but, you know, it's just nice to see people investing into, you know, organism-specific aquariums. Right, right. And, you know, some of them have been, I don't know, $500, $1,000, and they're big, and, you know, it's a big thing. It's kind of a big investment in jellyfish action. And I'm, I've seen so many June moon jellyfish, like, I just, they don't do it for me anymore. I've yeah. seen it at every public aquarium, seen it at every one of those booths, but Cubic particularly, Cubic uh, Marine Aquarium Systems that make, that was kind of one of the pioneers of making the jellyfish tanks. Um, they had some smaller ones and they had a desktop version that was just a, two cylinders and it was just real nice. All of them had the RGB LED colors to, to light everything up and um, yeah, I was, uh, was pretty impressed. Yeah, that was one of the things I missed, that booth, just because there were so many booths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, they, you know, it's one of those things. They definitely like, actually pulled me in after the uh, the end of the show. They were closing down, and yeah, lots and lots of jellyfish. Oh, and Eheim is jumping into you know marine aquariums with the uh, like large marine aquariums with reef ready. Yeah. So they're supposed to come out with that in the U.S. in the fall. So I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of sexy marine aquariums as time goes on. Yeah, you know, anybody who 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 was jaded by what's happening in the Marine Aquarium hobby just needs to come to Interzoo and uh, get a little reality check because there's so many people pushing on so many fronts. Um, lots and lots of things are changing. And then, uh, you know, for me, the coup de gras of doing all this, I've seen a peppermint angel fish. Oh, man. Peppermint angel fish at the Deong Marine Life booth. And the reef tank, man, that, that is just, that is the most crazy uh, trade show reef aquarium I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I can't. E I can't even imagine the work involved in setting this tank up. I mean, it was. It, it put my home tank and many home tanks just to shame. And it's an inner zoo tank. It's yeah, not, yeah, it's you a know, trade show. It's been up for a week and it's beautiful, amazing corals, in, in, in patches and groupings, even non photosynthetics and the rare fish. The just rare for fish days. collection was insane. There's a two tiger pieges, interruptus angel, a couple gem tanks, big school of Kalaura. Antheus, Feminist Rass, Feminist Rass, a couple of weird scribble peel, lemon peel angelfish. Um, I know I'm forgetting some. <laughs> oh, oh, there was type of bread clarions almost everywhere here. Oh yeah, clarions. Uh, well, and then at the Dion with you had conspix. Yeah, Dion had a, just as if having one tank with a tiny little conspix and a tiger angelfish wasn't enough. They had 
this little setup of, of, uh, of rare fish with conspicuous clarions, a little interruptus, and a gem tang. I'm just like, man, that was a, quite a show of force. But I mean, it's all about the peppermint for me, the peppermint yes, angel and yes. the king eye angel. And there I mean, could have been no other marine life at all at this show, and I would have been like, all right, peppermint angel fish. And it was cool. It was cool to, we had that appreciation for the fish. They were in a, a large, darkly lit tank, and um, they're cutting in the back and a little bit hidden, so you had to know what you were looking for. And we had the wherewithal to sit there and just wait for them to come out and enjoy them over a longer period of time. It was hilarious to see non-fish people that, you know, enjoy fish, you know, enjoy nice, pretty aquariums, and they would walk up and see this dimly lit aquarium and there's no action in it, and they just walk on. I couldn't, you know? <laughs> I couldn't believe how bright a peppermint angelfish is in the dark. Yeah. In the dark, with no ex extra lighting, just like so bright, red-orange. Uh, orange red with the white stripes and yellow accents and that one was always only like this big but it was just like doo -doo, doo -doo, just so ready and just see the boldness in the you know in the tiger king eye angel versus the peppermint angel it's just yep. their behavioral differences the tiger angel uh, angel fish was out and about and uh yeah that was a, a definitely a beautiful way to to end this uh, long long weekend and of vlogging and uh, long week of, of getting here and working it out so yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I'm I'm amazed at the number of people I met. Everyone's so nice. Everyone's really passionate, and you know I'm I'm just you get invigorated and you just want to go home and do stuff with your reef aquarium and and that's right. You know, there's so many ideas that are just processing in my brain right now that I haven't even finished. Really. Oh yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's kind of like the uh, the after effects. Once we get home, everything sinks in, and uh, we get time to think about what's happened and all the things that we've seen because we just have to go, 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 go. So um, I think this beer is well deserved. We've got our own little reef builders German beer garden here, and uh, castle. Yeah, little castle there. Um, but yeah, now it's time time to head home and write up some more posts. And uh, thanks uh, for coming out, Mark. It's good to thanks see you. Thanks for in having me. I had a blast. And. Um, We'll talk to you guys next time. Cheers.